Hey guys, and welcome back to another live stream. In today's second live stream, we'll be building out the operand register uh, to make it perform the shift operation uh, from the low bits into the high bits. So this operation is called a prefix, a pfix operation, um, and enables us to essentially load in a 4-bit constant into the low bits using pfix and then shift that into the high bits in the execute stage of the instruction. And then the next instruction loads up its small constant operand into the low 4 bits and we end up with overall an 8-bit uh, number. Okay, so to do this, we need to move these upper bits into the, sorry, these lower bits into the upper bits uh, by somehow lifting these up. Um, Okay, so the thing to remember is that these uh, outputs are inverted from the actual data, um, which was convenient for doing the muxes and will hopefully be convenient again. We just need to remember to invert them before we put it back in there. And the plan is to try and use that fact. Oh, I've built this across all eight bits when I only meant to do four. Um, the plan is to try and use that to avoid the need for repeaters, potentially. But we'll see. Um, so we go across and we're going to go over this clear line and down. And it's got to line up with this over here. Lazy. So... Okay, so by placing the torch there, we can easily shortcut. So we're still going to need a repeater, but um, that's one, and then the others.
Okay, so that gives us our um, four bits. And then we need to be able to control them independently. So we need to actually break these two lines here and uh, build kind of a separate lock and enable signal. Um, So we're going to build that small bit of control circuitry under here, but the ah, I still need to incorporate the clear signal. Uh, let's just build a separate one. So we'll do this, this, this. Okay, so that's that one. Clear that. So that cleared all of our registers. Never mind, we can read something back in from the uh, address later from the memory. So that enables both of those. That seems to work, and then we can just wire that in under here. Oh, and we're going to need the other, the other one here.
Yeah, so right hand one is the clock, left hand one is the enable. Um, same kind of thing here, except this got built separately. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to destroy this now because we don't need this anymore. Testing. Uh, we fixed the issue, so. Okay. Right, so we should now be able to block pulse that, which will give us all ones, which means these are unpowered, which means the inputs get here, uh, sorry, here get powered. Uh, these are currently set to zeros and they're all powered. So if we now pulse the clock, with the top bits enabled, then all of our outputs switch off and we're able to, and then of course we've shifted the low bits into the high bits. Uh, at the moment we were doing the program counter, which is currently zero because we cleared it, um, minus the operand register. So at the moment the operand register is now uh, all ones. So in other words, it's minus one. So minus minus one is plus one. So that's what's happening here. And then if I pulse the clock here, it'll get increased. And then we're essentially just counting up So you can see we're now just counting in binary because it's subtracting minus one, which is adding one. Great. So that's the operand shift. Nice and easy, very short. Um, slightly bigger challenge is the PC increment, uh, which I'll tackle in a moment. I'm just going to tab out and have a look at the module sim design to see what else we might be missing from the data path. As I said in the last live stream, the uh, designs for all of this will be available on GitHub along with the world files when it's finished and uh, all the Logisim designs and the spreadsheet that you'll see in the final video tomorrow. Um, that, that will be in there too. So I haven't done the logic unit yet. Uh, that's one thing that needs doing. Need to do the PC incrementer. Along with its MUX in like the multiplexer to select it for the program counter versus the arithmetic unit. Uh, we need to do the clear signals need to be linked up. The clock and the phases. We need to do register to generate that. Uh, we need to do the opcode register. Uh, we need to do the control path. Um, sure whether there's else really. What else is there? Oh, what I haven't done is the uh, operand reg, uh, like right to zero choice. And essentially muxing between the low bits and zero. 
which is essentially just an AND gate. Um, else? Missing? I think that's much everything we're going to need if I build all of that. So uh, drop back into the game now and think about which one I build. Um, let's just quickly do the logic unit. Um, so the logic unit, quite straightforward again, because we're outputting the inverse of the data, uh, to tell if something is zero, it's essentially just an AND of all the bits together. And uh, tell if something's negative, then it's just the inverse of this topmost bit. Um, yeah, so I just need to work out how to take a copy of these signals. Okay, so that's a nice copy of all of it. Uh, oh, I don't. Uh, what I need is to take copies of all these bits. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to see whether this power reaches. There we go. Uh, this is going to be on the end, this will tell us whether all the bits are zero. Okay, so that tells us whether everything is zero and We invert this this bit here will tell us whether the uh, value is negative or not, basically. I mean, the other way of writing that is a less than zero. Um, So double equals is like the programmer's way of writing this, and single equals would be the mathematical way of writing is is equal to zero. Um, and it depends what background you're from as to which you'll end up using more. Um, so yeah, mathematically we often write single equals to say is equal to, and then or question mark equals for decidable. 
an, an arrow to indicate assignment, whereas in programming, single equals is assignment and double equals is comparison. Just because programmers used to only use ASCII, we can use Unicode now, but people, most people don't like using it. It requires a lot of extra typing uh, and doesn't display properly on all screens still, despite it being 2020. Um, yeah. So that gives us our logic unit signals. That was quite easy. Um, I'm not going to link up the clear signals yet. Uh, I'm going to go and finish up that operand register. Um, so we know that there are repeaters here which are essentially dioding this, so it doesn't matter. Um, all that matters is that this power is one direction, so like the bits don't interfere with each other. Um, yeah. So if we power this, it will disable all of those torches, resulting in a zero. If we depower it, it will enable all of this, resulting in whatever was coming from here. So again, really having the registers store the inverse of the data is actually super helpful. Um, makes it really easy to do these NOR gate based multiplexers. Turns out I didn't need to leave as much space up here really, but whatever. Okay, so that's the operand register being multiplexed to zero. Um, now I need to do the PC increment. So the PC increment's a bit different to a normal adder because in a normal adder we have to carry in, we have uh, a B input, etc., etc. And in this case, we don't need that much complexity. Um, we're not going to be doing subtraction on the on the program counter. Uh, it's only ever going to add one, so we don't need all the complexity of a B input and a carry input. Um, we just need to be able to add a constant one. So, so if this is our data coming in, uh, when we add one, which is what we want to come out over here, um, So we have two possibilities. We're either doing 0 plus 1, which will equal 1, or we're doing 1 plus 1, which on the sum will equal 0. And on So uh, sorry if the stream is not quite working properly. Um, looks like the connection's Yeah, it looks like the connection is not quite working uh, properly. Not quite sure why that isn't working the way it's supposed to. And then if I... Huh. Well, I'm going to leave this... Uh, See whether it improves. Hopefully, it will. Um, so, okay. Well, uh, yeah. So the sum will either be uh, zero plus one, in which case it's one. One plus one, in which case it's zero. Uh, which is essentially if you. Just look at the left hand side, it's an inversion. So our sum is just not gate. That's really easy. Now the carry, so, so this is just looking at our first bit. Um, the carry is uh, essentially 
just the input data. Um, it doesn't need a. It doesn't need anything special at all. Um, so, in fact, when we think about it, the sum is coming out this way, and the carry is come out this way. Um, so, this is one plus one, which is two. So we get a carry, and we get a sum of one. Uh, this is zero plus one. Uh, so sum of one and carry of zero. So the next um, line across is one of these half adders like this uh, from our original full adder. That's what I'm going to try and build and get the inputs in the right place. So it will come across like this, up like this. Fortunately, this design looks really similar to a D flip flop. So. You know, they, they both use similar kinds of patterns. Important to try and get this right. Oh, I built this in slightly the wrong place, so I'm just going to shift this back because I think it needs to be like this, like this. And in fact, I can probably just use a piece of wire for that. Um, torch, this is. Torch, this is. Now, normally there'd be another input coming in here, and that's what this would be for. So this would be like this. But again, all of this is. Sort of overcomplicated, actually. I don't think it needs to be this. Um, so we've got A input down here, a B input coming in, which will look like this, but we want to bring it up. So if we're doing 0 plus 0, we'll get 0. Uh, 1 plus 0 is 0 plus 1, so that's our exclusive OR, essentially. Well, oh, let's see what happens if I build it this way. So if I bring that in there, this can act as our half adder. Oh, yeah, I was building this right. I just. Complicated it. Okay. And produce this here. And we're also going to need going to need that there. Right. That would normally go into an inverter. Yeah. Normally it would be one further back. So fill in that gap there. So here we're doing 0 plus 1, which gives us the sum of 0. This gives us, which gives us uh, and a carry 0. So this is 0 plus 0, gives us 0. Yeah. And I step this down properly. So we're just going to see whether this pattern works. Um, so remember, we're always adding one. So that's two. Uh, huh? Oh. There we go. 
So adding 1, so 0 plus 1, 1, 1 plus 1, 2, uh, 2 plus 1, 3, and uh, 3 plus 1 should have been 4, but it wasn't. So what did I do wrong? Oh, uh, I missed out an inverter. Let's go back and try this again. 0 plus 1, 1, 2, 3. Hmm. Uh, okay, why is that not giving me what I expected? So, carry I missed it. Yeah. Oh, I missed a torch under that one. There we go. So, uh, 2 plus 1, 1. Plus 1 is 2. Plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 1, 4, but that can't be represented. Two bits. So, this is our much more compact design for our PC increment. Uh, so it's just a bit shorter than the original. Um, in fact, can I even go smaller? One, three, four. Yeah, so I can even go one box smaller than I had it. And the Power should chain uh, if I place this torch in the right place. So now the, the power will chain because it will go here. Um, but only if it's three blocks wide. It would be nice if this Two box wide, but I don't think that's possible. If I bring this out further, I might be able to make this two blocks wide. The the depth here doesn't really matter. I allowed enough space for the depth, but if the thing isn't two blocks wide, then uh, it probably won't fit in the width I allowed for this thing. So I'm just going to out my theory by you know, double inverting is pointless, but best. Um, then I should be able to this across one. Torch under here. Ah, because of that block. So um Yeah, so zero. Okay, 
So this is kind of convenient because it just lines everything up uh, and shows that this is sustainable without it breaking the design in any way. That means that this can be two blocks wide, which means it will f hopefully fit in the same space. The only thing I'm thinking about is whether this is going to power the block here. Hopefully not. And that one's going to next to this one, so that's not going to be powered. Well, let's just build a second one and see whether this actually works as a chain thing or not before I start copying it. Uh oh. Uh, built these on the wrong position. works, we're really pleased. It's really super compact. So this is uh, okay, so that's not work because it's setting the carry bit. So now I need to work out what's getting powered that shouldn't when I do that. Um, or whether I missed a torch somewhere. Have missed a torch. There we go. That's producing a one at the right time, and power this on. We're always adding one. Okay, so adding one to that works just fine. Like it works. This is a super compact, or at least as compact as I think I can make it, uh, way of just adding one the whole time. Um, so this we can use for our PC incrementer. Um, so I'm going to loan this into place and then figure out what to do with it. <laughs> Um, oh no, because I've I've built it facing this way, and Minecraft's cloning stuff doesn't like rotating, so I'll probably have to build it again. Um, And I know that I want the 
PC increment to come in under here uh, to power these lines um, from over here. So yeah, the low bit being on. Well, the other thing is I've got to get the data over from here to here, do the increment, and then feed it back around. Or I could just go up and over the top. I'm just going to go up and over the top. That's going to be a lot easier um, than the plan of dragging it all the way over there. Um, just have some extra empty space in the design. Doesn't matter. I need to see what level to bring these to in order to be able to get an over. I'll build the PC incrementer in this space. This is the low bit. So I actually need to flip everything I just built to make it the other way up, essentially, the other way around. Isomorph, isotope, I suppose, makes sense. Sort of like an isotope. Flip the other way around. Um, This was like this, this was the sum coming out. Uh, out of space, two. Goes into here in this space. I don't fully remember the design. It's this. I'm going to go back over there and see what they did. And then try and flip it in my header in order to build it the other way round. Data coming in like this. Now this is inverted data, uh, meaning I actually need to do this because yeah, the register store the opposite, and we definitely don't want the opposite coming in here. And again, in this case, it would be inverting the inversion, uh, inverting the inverted data, so it's pointless. Let's just do it like that. Um, carry on building this. So that torch goes on there. Down like this. That torch goes under there. And
by running like this. Torch there and a block here to. Oh, I've got that block to block it off. Stop any accidental connection. Um, probably missing some. Might be missing this. I'm going to go and check. So that's the torch I always forget to build. Um, otherwise, I think we're go. Uh, there's an output torch. Output torch. Gap. Got all of that. This is our result coming out. Oopsie. That. Okay. I didn't. That. That. Not that. Okay. And And uh, yeah, hopefully this will represent the correct value. So this first bit, the input, well, all the bits, the, the inputs are inverted. So in this case, this is uh, 1 plus or 1 plus 1, yeah, uh, which gives us the correct result. Um, this is zero plus one. Doesn't this is zero plus one? Um, correct result, and this is two plus one. Oh no, sorry. Uh, hmm. This should have been on. There we go. That's 2 plus 1, 0 plus 1, and uh, 30 logic's really did get around. Um, next, like this. So this is. Three plus one, yeah, fine. I'm going to stop messing around with this now and uh, try and see if I can get this to repeat across. So what I want to, to copy is this bit and then step it one. F oh, I need to step it one forward from where it is. If I do, that's going to be Tricky. One of these has got to be somewhere. Maybe it's this one can invert. There we go. But I can probably do the same thing up here to get a repeated design. All right, so this coordinate here, down one, is clonable. Uh, this is our maxima coordinate because of the way Minecraft works. 
Um, so I'll fly up high enough. So I'm going 153, 50, 41, and one across, which is something 40. So uh, the X I want to go through to all the way over here, which is 116. The Y. I want to be uh, on this level, I think. I can never tell whether it's the one I'm standing on or not. Let's do it to this. The Y is going to be 40. And I'm going to be copying it um, from here here to 39. Right. Clone 116, 40, 40, 153, 50, 41, 116, 40, 39. Oh, 38. Go, go across. That built a line, it didn't affect the repeater underneath, good. Um, the overlap seems to have worked, and at the moment we're doing 0 plus 1. Uh, let's see what happens if we were to do um one 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 plus one zero uh one one should give us two um two plus one should give us four. Oh, just happened. Hmm. This was three plus one, which gave us four. Oh, this was. This is two plus one giving us three. Yeah. Uh, this is six plus one giving us seven. Good. Okay, I think we get the idea. It seems to generally work. So now we can clone that across. Um, these runs aren't being connected yet. That's fine. I'll connect them up in a minute. It's not good. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This should be the last one. Hopefully, we'll line up. That there, yep. So now I just need to build the connections.
So at the moment it should be doing 0, 1, um, that looks like it's all wired in. Um, Four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. With any luck, we'll exactly the distance I just measured. Yeah. If I go one block further, it should have run out. So, place all of these. Wire. That's just disabling the uh, reading from the arithmetic unit. Um, don't want to be accidentally doing that, and I'm going to just misalign that slightly. Um, two, three, four, five, six. The reason for that is it's going to allow me to step down here, have here that should just work. Yep. Back, delete this. So now we've got outputs from our PC ink program counter incrementer, um, little compact circuit, better than using a complete adder because the complete adder would have required us to separate all of these wires out by an extra block, an extra space, um, which would have caused a real problem, uh, basically. We wouldn't have had space to do that. Okay, so now I can step this down. Uh, how did I do downwards before? I can't remember how I did downwards before. Managed it over here. Oh yeah, the repeater comes in behind, so we probably have space to do that on these because there's a slight overhang. Yeah. So oh, I don't think we need to do the reversal just yet, actually. We've got quite a long way to go down. I'm going to try building the MUX circuitry under here and so our data is coming in from behind us. If data comes in at this level, and the control signal is at the same level on the opposite side, where these come in and left the repeaters in place from last time. Uh, hmm. 
But if I push it a bit further along, if I can move these bits a tag closer, then uh, I'll avoid the need for these repeaters, I think. If I look on these, the repeaters are there, and not there, there, I don't know why they're here on this, that shouldn't be necessary. All the torches are close enough on those. Um, that's got one, two, three repeaters. That's one, two, three repeaters. One repeater. Uh, why has it not got the others? Is that just because I never tested it? Yep, I never tested it. It makes me wonder whether this extra repeater here is needed. So it's being powered like that, powered like that. Ah, oh, it's because it's being powered up underneath by one offset um, where it is, so that's why that's necessary. Okay. That's one block short. Huh. Oh. That also suggests that the wrong place. There's lots of little tiny bugs around. Little arrows causing it to go wrong. No idea how I'm going to figure out the timing the clock on all of this. Try various things and hope. <laughs> um, so in that case these need to be close enough. Now it's going to reach all the way across the board. This is our PC increment signals coming in this way. All signals will come from the other side. This will be our multiplexer control. Under. Yeah. because these are going to be powered by wires coming in the other side, not repeaters, uh, the blocks aren't going to be powered, so this should 
work just fine. Won't interfere. There we go, we can disable that or enable it. Um, I'll link it up to the PC select in a moment, but for the moment we'll leave the two interdependent. Uh, very independent. Will become interdependent in a moment. Give myself some space to work in. And now I need to get these signals up here down to these. And inverters can go here because remember these are AND gates so these to be the opposite coming in. Oh and this is all set by one or two. Set by Oh, I see, I've stepped across twice. Hmm, that might cause a problem. We shall find out. Doable. I need to be able to test all of these, so I'm going to supply power to all of these ones powered anyway. I need to see whether that power is reaching down, which it is. So I think the spacing of this is just perfect for what we need. Yeah. Love to see someone try to build one of these in survival mode with all the iron. No cheating, no like uh, I suppose you could do it with like dirt blocks or something. Dirt based computer. Um but it'd be kind of funny to see someone attempt. to do it entirely 
as per this design, iron, redstone, everything. I'm not sure it would be very useful either, because uh, this, this particular computer is going to be so slow that it wouldn't respond to anything. By the time it's finished fetching an instruction, someone will have uh, griefed the program counter. So this is now doing the program counter plus one and the new inputs. Oh. Interesting. Um be off, that should be off. Why are these on? Oh. Not missing dust on these ones. Maybe I deleted them and rebuilt them without rebuilding the dust at some point. Don't worry. There are a million tiny bugs inside this machine that I don't know about yet. I'm going to have to fix, but anyway. Um, and now I can link up these signals here. a bit easier than the other registers because we've got tons and tons of space in which to do it. Oh. Built it from the wrong. And one has to be the inverse of the other. So. If I flick the switch, back to doing this one. That will power everything. If I flick the other way. So this is now reading from the uh, new program counter coming in. At the moment, our program counter is uh, zero, D through all of these wires being on. Our new program counter is one. And if I fly over to where the clock signal is, we can start to see what happens. So this is the clock. Pulse it, add one. Pulse it, add one. So again, this is just doing the same as our arithmetic unit, but uh, completely dedicated to adding one to the program counter. It won't do anything else. Uh, really straightforward. And we can choose between that being our input, or we can select um, selector. What's under here? Uh, or we can select the value coming from the arithmetic unit. Um, the arithmetic unit happens to be doing, in fact, I don't even know what it's doing anymore. Um, 
I don't know what it's programmed to do. I think it's doing operand register, which is currently set to all ones. My, the operand register, which is minus one. The program counter is on the A input, and it's doing a subtraction by the looks of it. It's currently doing the program counter minus minus one, which is the program counter plus one, so that's a bit pointless. Uh, so let's just do the program counter plus minus one. So the program counter minus one. Um, is that correct? Is that what I've done? The input is the brand. Trying to search for where our data input is. Our input was one one zero zero. Our output is yeah, that looks like it's attracted one to me. So to demonstrate that we're doing plus one and minus one here, I can hopefully alternate between them. So at the moment this will count down. Go, and we can see there that that's a ripple carry adder. Uh, we see the bits all changing at different times. Um, like the right hand most low bit is ready first. So that's counting downwards, and then if I go and flip this control lever, we'll start reading from the program counter increment, and it's going to start counting upwards. So we can see that um, the data input goes the other way. Start counting upwards. And we can see that that PC increment is just that much faster um, because it's a nearby circuit. Oh, I've accidentally put a one tick pulse through the program counter. So yeah, that's broken it. Um, clear our program counter to one. That won't have affected our operand register. Okay, so we can now see that our PC increment is a much faster uh, adder than our full arithmetic unit, which is to be expected because it's only a half adders each one, and there's way less circuitry. Um, but you can see as I as I pulse the clock here, this isn't too slow actually. This is getting the result back to us reasonably quickly. Um, yeah, like that's faster than I thought this whole computer was going to be. And that, that's just the PC increment. So, you know, we'll have to take into account the memory going all the way to the other side of this thing and back. Okay, on the PC increment. Um, yeah, the opcode register doesn't exist on this and the clear signals need connecting uh, the memory. Okay, so I, I'm probably done for today now. Uh, I've done half hours on it I think now. Today. Um, but yeah, so we now have the memory, have registers, we have the AU, we have the PC increment, we have the prefix control on the operand register, we also have our logic unit telling us whether the A register is all zero or whether it's negative. Um, yeah, I think that's most stuff, like we have the MUX control on the arithmetic, uh, sorry, from the arithmetic unit and the program counter going to the address lines of the memory. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really close now. So tomorrow I need to add the opcode register. 
uh, which I think I will place actually in this space that I left. So I can put the four bits for the opcode register in here, and then that will nicely provide um, signals for the control signals going right into the middle of the computer here, right into the middle of the processor, which I can then spread out to the various points that they need to go to. Um, yeah, that's going to be quite nice to have the control unit built right from the opcode register in the, in the heart of the machine. Um, that's where it should be, really. But it's not going to be quite laid out the same as Module Sim, although really our whole thing here is actually very, very similar to the Module Sim layout, which is satisfying. We can see very clearly where all of the address bus, uh, data bus, both input and output, where all the connections are. Um, and that, just as with most chips, uh, the wiring makes up most of the work. Um, the actual logic of a register, an arithmetic unit, a memory cell, all of that is really quite a small amount of space. Uh, the wiring in between and the multiplexing and choice stuff takes up a huge amount more. Great. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow for the next stream uh, where I'll be uh, building the opcode register and the uh, probably hooking up the clear signals together, uh, leaving just the um, control path to do on the control path and clock and phase signals to do um, on the day after, which will be day nine, and then on day ten, the final day, I will hook up the control path and program the memory. Uh, to see a program actually execute.